The Voyager probes have just made contact with an unknown object in deep space. Being the farthest man-made object in the universe gives them a unique vantage point to explore regions that were otherwise inaccessible. Let's take a closer look at this latest discovery. The Voyager program consists of two robotic interstellar probes called Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, respectively. They were launched way back in 1977, making the program the longest one in human history. What's even more inspiring, though, is the fact that the probes continue to send back data to the Earth to this very day, making them an invaluable tool for space exploration. Even though Voyager 2 was the first one to launch from Earth, the route it took to the stars meant that it would be the second in the race to reach the heliosphere. The scope of the mission was to study the outer part of the solar system and gain knowledge about the outer planets and their moons. At first, the mission was quite simple. Voyager 1 had to study the planetary systems of Jupiter and Saturn, and Voyager 2 had to study Uranus and Neptune. Currently, the Voyager space probes are exploring the outer boundary of the heliosphere in interstellar space. As a result of their success, the mission has been extended three times as they continue to transmit useful scientific data. It was confirmed that on August 25, 2012, Voyager 1 had become the first man-made object to exit the solar system and enter interstellar space. A few years later, it was also confirmed that Voyager 2 also indicated it would enter interstellar space in 2018. As of 2021, Voyager 1 was recorded moving at a velocity of around 38,000 miles per hour relative to the Sun. It is currently more than 14.2 billion miles from Earth, and data from 2012 suggests that the probe has entered interstellar space. On the other hand, Voyager 2 was observed to be moving at a velocity of around 34,000 miles per hour relative to the Sun and is more than 11.8 billion miles from the Earth. Data from 2019 suggests that Voyager 2 has also gone interstellar. Evidence suggests that the probe has reached a region of outer space called the interstellar medium. Even though both crafts have moved beyond the influence of the solar wind, they are still a long way away from reaching the end of the solar system. NASA estimates it will take another 14,000 to 28,000 years for Voyager 1 to emerge from the Oort cloud and exit the confines of the solar system. The data and photographs collected by the Voyager probes on their way to interstellar space have been essential in revealing some of the mysteries about each of the four giant planets in our neighborhood. The Voyager space probes are powered by radioisotope thermoelectric generators, a type of nuclear battery. This is a type of battery that is perfect for missions needing energy over a long period of time, which would be too long for fuel cells or batteries, and that can't rely on solar energy. It allows us to organize very long missions to happen. As such, it's predicted that the batteries will no longer be functional from 2032 on, about 55 years after the launch of the space probes, which is quite remarkable. However, as time passed by, various functions and systems of the probes had to be switched off to keep the main system in working order. Consequently, they'll be able to keep their current set of scientific instruments on until 2025. The space probes were initially conceived as part of the Mariner program whose purpose was to launch various robotic interplanetary probes from 1962 to 1973 to investigate Mars, Venus, and Mercury. But as their mission has been changed to go study Jupiter and Saturn, they were removed from the Mariner program. At first, they kept their original name and were called the Mariner, Jupiter, Saturn space probes. However, due to their evolution from the Mariner space probes, their name was quickly changed to Voyager. This new program took over many elements of the Grand Tour program. As indicated by its name, the Grand Tour program, developed by NASA, aimed to send two groups of robotic probes to all the planets part of the outer solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune. Yet this program was deemed too expensive, around $1 billion. Consequently, it was canceled and replaced with the Voyager program. For this reason, the Grand Tour program had a major influence on the Voyager program as it fulfilled a lot of the planned objectives for the Grand Tour, except for a visit to Pluto. Four years ago, the Voyager 2 probe became just the second human-made object in history to exit the solar system and officially enter interstellar space. On November 5, 2018, the craft officially left the solar system as it crossed the heliopause, the boundary that marks the end of the heliosphere and the beginning of interstellar space. This area is the outermost region of the solar system, sometimes referred to as the bubble, and is located around 119 astronomical units from the Sun.
The spacecraft was able to analyze the makeup of solar winds, the composition and behavior of plasma particles, the interaction of cosmic rays, the structure and direction of magnetic fields, and other traits that define the edges of the solar system. This allowed the craft to make some shocking discoveries about the edge of our solar system. Voyager 2's exit from the interstellar bubble was not without surprises. According to the data, the bubble was found to be very leaky. This is because the material from the solar bubble was discovered out in interstellar space. Voyager 1 had found signs of a leaky bubble as well. In that instance, however, interstellar material was found streaming into the bubble. This is the opposite of what Voyager 2 discovered. The new findings confirm that the leakiness of the heliopause, spotted in two very different parts of the heliosphere, is not a rare characteristic of the bubble, although there is still no real explanation for what's causing it. Before the Voyager missions, scientists predicted that the solar bubble just sort of dissolved into interstellar space as you ventured farther and farther from the sun. Data from Voyager 2 seems to confirm this fact. The craft's plasma wave instrument ended up measuring plasma densities that were very much on par with what Voyager 1 detected. Because solar plasma is so hot and interstellar plasma is incredibly cold, the density of plasma jumps up by a factor between 20 and 50 as you cross the border. Scientists note that this characteristic of fluids forms very sharp boundaries. They were especially surprised that both Voyagers crossed the heliopause at the same relative distances. Previous models heavily predicted that heightened solar activity during Voyager 1's crossing in 2012 should have pushed the bubble's boundary farther out. A period of low solar activity should have pulled the heliopause back a bit during Voyager 2's crossing, which came later. The fact that both spacecraft left the solar system at pretty much the same distance, at two very different locations, is a source of confusion at the moment. Voyager 2 also made some observations that don't square up with a sharp boundary, at least not what we'd expect. The biggest of these is the magnetic field measurements inside and outside the bubble. Astronomers expected the direction of the magnetic field would be very different between the two. Yet, when Voyager 2 crossed this thin surface, there was essentially no change in the direction of the field. This is something Voyager 1 observed as well. At the same time, the magnetic field observations on Voyager 2 suggest it found a thinner and simpler heliopause, filled with less energetic particles than what Voyager 1 crossed. Again, all this data taken together raises more questions than it can answer. It is well known that the Sun consistently spews out shock waves of plasma called coronal mass ejections, which help shape the rest of the solar system. Turns out the Sun's impact goes beyond its own borders. The new Voyager 2 data, like the Voyager 1 data before it, shows how CMEs propagate past the heliopause and lower the number of cosmic rays beyond the bubble. This is somewhat similar to what you might find out in the galaxy. Supernovae send shockwaves out into the galaxy as well, stirring the interstellar medium, albeit at a much more intense scale than CMEs. Most astronomers believe that the formation of the solar system was triggered by an interstellar shockwave from a supernova. If we think about the potential for cosmic rays to promote biological mutations in life on Earth, these findings lend support to the idea that the Sun could also influence the evolution of living things on extraterrestrial worlds in this planetary system and elsewhere. The legendary Voyager probes have been charting a course through deep space for almost half a century now, so it comes as no surprise that the crafts are finally starting to show their age. Recently, it was announced that Voyager 1 has run into some problems. While the Interstellar Explorer is operating normally, receiving and executing commands from Earth, along with gathering and returning science data. But readouts from the probe's attitude, articulation, and control system don't reflect what's actually happening on board. The AACS controls the 45-year-old spacecraft's orientation. Among other tasks, it keeps Voyager 1's high-gain antenna pointed precisely at Earth, enabling it to send data home. All signs suggest the AACS is still working, but the telemetry data it's returning is invalid. For instance, the data may appear to be randomly generated or does not reflect any possible state the AACS could be in. The issue hasn't triggered any onboard fault protection systems which are designed to put the spacecraft into safe mode, a state where only essential operations are carried out, giving engineers time to diagnose an issue. Voyager 1 signal hasn't weakened either, which suggests the high-gain antenna remains in its prescribed orientation with Earth. The team will continue to monitor the signal closely as they continue to determine whether the invalid data is coming directly from the AACS or another system involved in producing and sending telemetry data. 
Until the nature of the issue is better understood, the team cannot anticipate whether this might affect how long the spacecraft can collect and transmit science data. Voyager 1 is currently 14.5 billion miles from Earth, and it takes light 20 hours and 33 minutes to travel that difference. That means it takes roughly two days to send a message to Voyager 1 and get a response, a delay the mission team is well accustomed to. Scientists are hard at work trying to explain this new mystery and believe that the data may be a result of the craft deteriorating due to age. The spacecraft are both almost 45 years old, which is far beyond what the mission planners anticipated. They are also in interstellar space, which is a high radiation environment that no spacecraft has flown in before. While this is a big challenge for the team, scientists believe if a solution to the AACS issue exists, they will find it. Another possibility is that the team may not find the source of the anomaly and will instead adapt to it. If they do find the source, they may be able to solve the issue through software changes or potentially by using one of the spacecraft's redundant hardware systems. It wouldn't be the first time the Voyager team has relied on a backup hardware. In 2017, Voyager 1's primary thrusters showed signs of degradation, so engineers switched to another set of thrusters that had originally been used during the spacecraft's planetary encounters. Those thrusters worked, despite having been unused for 37 years. Voyager 1's twin, Voyager 2, continues to operate normally. Launched in 1977, both Voyagers have operated far longer than mission planners expected and are the only spacecraft to collect data in interstellar space. Each spacecraft produces about four fewer watts of electrical power a year, limiting the number of systems the craft can run. The mission engineering team has switched off various subsystems and heaters to reserve power for science instruments in critical systems. No science instruments have been turned off yet because of the diminishing power, and the Voyager team is working to keep the two spacecraft operating and returning unique science beyond 2025. While the engineers continue to work at solving the mystery that Voyager 1 has presented them, the mission scientists will continue to make the most of the data coming down from the spacecraft's unique vantage point. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about NASA's latest discovery of another planet. Do you think the Voyager program should be retired? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.